What you're looking at here is a Freemason jewel. And the reason they're referred to as jewels is because only a master jeweler could make something with such precision and detail. Um, you have to understand that the object you're looking at is not that large. It's only about three and a quarter inches long and about an inch and three quarter inches wide at the widest area. So to create the illusion of looking down a grand hallway with such perspective on a small flat surface area requires the mastery of a great fine jeweler. I, um, I have a pretty large collection of Masonic jewels from all over the world that span hundreds of years. And I really appreciate them because they have historic value, they have artistic value, they have symbolic value, and of course, precious metal content value. 99% of all my Masonic jewels are made of either silver and gold or both. And, um, you know, this particular piece you're looking at is a special one it's, it's you know custom made for the individual's name you can see i'm going to slide it down and zoom in a little so you can see what i'm going to discuss it was made for paul r byram okay and it was presented in the year 1932 his name is embellished with curling accents and open cut details very ornate okay directly below this is hanging an uh, enameled blue triangle. It's not a closed triangle. It's incomplete, symbolizing we're, we're all striving toward perfection, hopefully. <laughs> and um, in the very center of the triangle, pointing upwards, is a, is a yellow gold trowel. And then there's a sword slashing through, not the middle of the triangle, but up higher, if it were a pyramid, it would be defining the all-seeing eye in that Egyptian pyramid. So it's cutting off that at that specific proportion. And the sword looks like it might be made of silver, but it's actually white gold. And the handle, or what's called the hilt, is made and crafted out of fine rose gold. So it's really an exquisite, highly detailed, symbolic piece. We'll slide it up and talk about this area now. Okay. There we go. So uh, connected to the top of the bar via two golden chains is the Masonic Golden Archway. And of course, at the very top of the arch, is set with the Royal Arch Keystone. That's what gives every arch integrity. And in the middle of the keystone is a sparkling natural European cut diamond. You can see rose gold flourish accents, the columns on either side of the hall. This, this hallway is paved with very fine detailed checkerboard floor. It's literally uh, inlaid white and black enamel squares at a perspective that are in between each white and black square is, is gold. It has to be seen in person to appreciate it, the, the detail of such an object. The overall effect is giving this you know, tremendous illusion of a grand hallway you're looking down that only a, a fine jeweler could achieve. At the very end of the hall is a black enamel doorway symbolizing infinity. And in the middle of that is a triangle made of yellow gold and white enamel. If you see up close, it's this an ancient symbol called Fiat Lux, which is the symbol for light. I think we're all moving toward the light, hopefully. And, uh, <coughs> excuse me, the back of the metal has a very smooth, I'm not gonna turn it over to show you, but it's highly polished finish, like a proof finish. That's like a mirror reflection. And 
and then engraved on it is who presented the piece, the name Shekinah in the council number 24, the year 1923. Um, the whole object weighs about 40 grams. And I, even the, uh, the fasten and the hinge and the pin clasp on the back that enables it to be attached on the brother's clothing is professionally tested as 14 karat pure gold composition. So I uh, am so honored and, and, and grateful to, to have a piece as beautiful as this and I hope you appreciate the beauty as well.